Thank you so much for joining us on another awesome episode of Bioenergetic Beats. I'm Heather Gray, a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and certified bioenergetic practitioner. And today, this episode is brought to you today by Nikki, Unleash the Wellness Within. It's a wearable device. It's a non-invasive, easily affordable, highly effective approach to optimal wellness. Uh, it puts frequency better based life in your hands and on your wrist. And you're going to want to make sure to stick around till the very end, because as usual, we have an awesome giveaway that you're not going to want to miss out on. And as usual, you're not going to want to miss out on one second that this lady has to say, because she's a huge, huge mentor of mine, like a hero, Shiro, right? I've been following her for years. Her work is really what really changed my health around. So like, this is, this is huge folks, like give it up for Dr. Amy Piggy. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> Thank good you so to be much. here, Heather. It's good to see you. You as well. Like, I, I'm not even kidding. I, I, I'm surprised your ears don't burn like five times a day because every time I'm on a podcast and I'm talking about trauma and mindset, like I, your name comes up, your name comes up because I learned these things from you. You know, you really helped change my nervous system, change my life. And we'll be d diving deeper into stress and anxiety and would love to hear a little bit of your backstory and kind of, you know, what makes you tick, why this topic and, and how you got started. Yeah. You make me laugh when you, when you say that, uh, you know, my name comes up because for me, this has become, and this became a need to make it very practical. And I think that is different than what I would have normally um, followed if I had just followed my traditional career and, and the conventional medical pathway, where it's really just about learning information and being able to recognize a pattern, diagnose the pattern, and then write a prescription for the diagnosis. And there's really, there's really so much that, that we miss with that. And so when it comes to the trauma, this was not something that I had planned to study. This was not something that I had planned ever to make it my career. It became something that I, I had to learn what to do. And that was because I adopted and became a, a mom of a child who had significant childhood trauma and was not getting better with the evidence-based uh, approaches and therapies. And very quickly, it got, I, I mean, I'm going to use the word dangerous. It got, it got, got dangerous very quickly because with the anger and aggression that he had, and really, I mean, just the amount of terror that he had, he uh, would do things that would put my life at danger, his life at danger. And, and this is my home. It isn't something that I you know, go to work and I go to the child psych unit, even though, yes, that was part of where I was rotating at the time, which was a little, a little weird, uh, to, <laughs> to go to work and my work be, you know, at that time I was in medical school. And so my work be, I'm rotating through the child psych unit. And then I'm coming home to the very same thing and very much realizing that I don't want my son to end up in a child psych unit and, and so very motivated to find whatever answers that he needed to rise above his past and what had happened to him. He had been placed in the foster care system when he was nine months old, probably should have been placed in the foster care system at when he was born, but, but, um, life happens. And it wasn't until he was nine months old that finally it got bad enough that a report was made and he already had a broken bone. It had never been treated and all of, all of this stuff. And when he comes into the system, as we can know, uh, it didn't get any better. There was a lot of abuse that happened in the system. There was so much instability, uh, even just not only regular homes that he was placed in, but just moves, right? So they move them from one holding place to another holding place to a group home and then to another holding place. And they don't consider those placements, but those are still moves. And by the time he came to me, he was age four. He had already had over 20 different moves. Oh. And so the amount of, I mean, he had no sense of safety or stability, which was why I went into this experience knowing, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that my love would be enough because that was what he really needed. I mean, that's what all kids need and want, right? Is, is just to be loved. And I knew that the stability that I could provide him would be enough for him. 
And when that was not enough and he continued to get worse and now was um, telling me that he was going to kill me and trying to kill me, it became a, okay, like I can't, I can't ignore this. This is bad enough. This is dangerous enough that I have to start finding answers. So in a sense, right, like to hell with your studies, to <laughs> hell with your evidence base, I need something because I've got this kid in my arms right now and he's trying to kill me. What do I do? Because reporting him to the police is not an option. Taking him to the child psych unit is not an option. Those things aren't helping him. I need help. So that was where for me, I became obsessed with it has to be practical. If, if it's not information that I can apply and it helps, put it in the trash. I only have time <laughs> for what is going to help me and get me solutions. Even if it's playing the long game, that's fine. I, I'm, I'm committed. I'm the mom now. I will play the long game, but I need to know that this is actually going to work. And it took me six long years to put the pieces together for him. And if I, in the medical field, got lost and it took that long to figure out the pieces for him, my goodness, right? Like the, the other people who don't have that kind of both information, education, and access to resources. I was on a medical campus. I had access to the best of the best. And that's still where it took me and how long it took me. So from there, it just became this ongoing obsession then for give me what actually works. Give me actually what works. I need something practical. So everything that I do now, and obviously, yes, by now this has changed my life and this is the work that I do. Everything now that I do, I'm wanting to empower people with something practical that they can do right now that actually works, that actually works. And I know that it works because of all of the experience that I've had. And as I go back now through my lens of the experiences that I've had, I can see how the literature supports why these things are practical, but to have to piece that together. I mean, we're talking over a decade now of me piecing things together that I now bring together and package it in a, and here's what to do. And that's why you're such a freaking rock star and why I fell in love with you and why I continue to re-fall in love with you because you are like, unlike other practitioners out there, you have distilled this down to be so beautiful, so accessible. So, you know, understanding you're not speaking over our heads. Like it's so ridiculously practical and, and it did. You're was it a 21 day journey, you know, completely changed my nervous system in 21 days with these simple little exercises that I still have a hard time getting some clients to follow because they think that it's too easy. Too and they, they just mm -hmm. want to supplement, you know, I'm still having issues with my anxiety. Well, did you do your VUs today? No. Did you do your breath work today? No. Well, did you do? No, no, I'm not giving you another supplement for your anxiety. Like you really have got to get your nervous system out of fight or flight. Right. And that's what we're talking about with the stress and anxiety. And that's one thing I love about, you know, this little gadget too, because, you know, it deals with the bioenergetic field with stress and anxiety as well. And so when we can come at something from a couple different angles, right, it really helps speed up the process. Yeah. I mean, that's my whole experience. And now my premise is that we can actually accelerate what has been the very long trauma healing journey mm -hmm. because we've been trying to just do one modality or we've been trying to silo it. We've been trying to um, work on the nervous system, maybe over here with breath work, but we're not doing the biology work, or maybe we are trying to do the biology work, but we're not doing the somatic work that it, it all affects our nervous system. And really, I mean, truly everything does come down to our nervous system and the regulation of our nervous system. And if our nervous system is not regulated and by regulated, I mean, in a healthy place, um, able to adapt to change rather than get fired up and triggered with change. When that is the state of our nervous system, it will be more receptive to all of the therapies that we're doing. If it's not in that place, it is guarded. It is braced. It sees everything as suspicious and a potential danger. And so this is where even down to our digestive system, it's going to guard ourselves and it's not going to be as good at even absorbing the nutrients that we need. So everything comes down to the nervous system, which is why to know 
the most effective tools to bring the most amount of change as quickly as possible for me has been very valuable. And like, like you, right. For many others, the changes that they experience in just 21 days is pretty amazing. And even as a medical physician, I'm still shocked at the, that the results people are getting where the numbers now are 26% decrease in daily physical pain, 28% decrease in GI symptoms, 30% decrease in anxiety, 30% decrease in fatigue. And we haven't even started the biology work, which is where we need to go next. But that is just with very simple skills that actually work directly on our nervous system to bring that sense of safety and support and then safe growth and expansion. And as people come into my program, that is one of the very first things that I hear them say as well is the same thing they, they say to you. This is too simple. There's no way that this will work. And I'm like, if you only knew the science that goes behind this, if you only knew the years that I have spent figuring out what is the most important thing that will make the most amount of difference and to simplify it so that everyone could do it. <laughs> Can I get and an yet, amen? <laughs> yet they only see the end product. They only see a simple exercise. They don't understand all that has gone into creating that and distilling that down to out of all the things out there, here is what is the most important thing to start with, with your nervous system. When you have these patterns of reactivity, triggering fight, flight, or even the shutdown and the trauma response. Absolutely. You know, this is, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. We're going to pause real quick for a break, but when we come back, we're going to dive deeper into, hopefully she'll show us some of these somatic experiencing exercises that we talked about a little bit of the science behind them. What does somatic even mean? Right. And then we'll also talk about her, no, her next biology, a trauma summit coming up. Like that's really where I first met her and completely changed my life, introduced me to so many other incredible practitioners in this you know, work of healing trauma and biology and, and putting it all together, because that's the part where the beauty, where really the magic lies, right? We've been compartmentalizing things for so long and we've, we've, we've learned now that we can't, we, it, everything needs to be talking to each other and we have to address it all. And, and that's what you do so, so beautifully. So don't go anywhere, everybody. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. There's a new word for wellness, Nikki. Nikki, the bioenergetic wearable designed to help you feel better and perform better. Other wearables just track how you're doing. Nikki is about helping you do better. Nikki takes bioenergetic frequency science to a new level and onto your wrist. Nikki technology carries frequencies into the body to organize and optimize the cellular network, the trillions of cells that communicate by light and frequencies to keep us alive and feeling our best. Physical and mental trauma can upset cellular communication, and Nikki is designed to help restore it. Touch the Nikki screen to choose the frequency you want for what you want to do and how you want to feel. Every Nikki comes loaded with a full inventory of frequency sets, including pain, energy, travel, immune, stress and anxiety, viruses and bacteria, allergies, insomnia, daytime bundles, nighttime bundles. Nikki puts a personal wellness center in your hands and on your wrist. Be better. Do better. We are Nikki.com. Awesome. Welcome back, man. I'm all fired up. Hopefully you're all fired up. <laughs> so I would love to hear, can you show us some of these exercises that you teach in your 21 day program? And like, what is some of the science behind it? And what does somatic even mean to those out there who might not know? All great questions. And yes, I am happy to share one. I think that I will pick the push away as the one that I will share with people. That's my favorite. <laughs> There's just Ah, oh, there's just something to the exercise, which is why, which is why I teach it. Right. Um, but I don't know, like the stomach support is also probably one of, one of the, the exercises that people notice the most amount of difference, even if they've never done anything somatic exercise. So, so all to say somatic means it's the Latin word for tissue. That's it. it it's the actual tissue. So when we think of the, the phrase that we've heard, you know, the issues are in the tissues, 
Well, yeah, we got to work with the tissues and this is how we do that. This is different than working at the cellular level, which is also what we need to do. So there is this thing, it's called the cell danger response, and it is different than a stress response at the cellular level. And so we will need to address things at the cellular level. And this is our way to work at the tissue level. And we will need to work at the cognitive level and the behavioral level. So there are all these different levels in which stress and trauma show up in our life. And we're going to need to have tools for each of the levels. Somatic work is the tool for the tissue level. And what's awesome is that at the tissue level, that's really where the nervous system has its endings. And so our nerves, they, they travel wherever they go in our body, and then they end there in the tissue or in the extracellular matrix. And that's where they send off whatever messages that they're trying to send off. When we have a stress response, that signal that they send out is noradrenaline, and then it sends out adrenaline. But that noradrenaline is the first response that we get. And that even helps us with that startle response. Mm -hmm. And then we really feel that whoo, heart racing and my blood is pumping. That is so fast that that's often noradrenaline first in the tissues. It's actually not adrenaline yet. And then the adrenaline comes and then about 20 minutes later, cortisol comes. So we have this tissue response and all this stuff is happening in the tissues that then signals to the cells, hey, we need more energy because we got to take some action. We got to run away from this tiger that just jumped out at us. And so the tissues is where all of this busyness and this communication happens. And it's what's really connected with the nervous system. And so to work with the tissues is to work with the nervous system. And as we engage our muscles and we move our muscles or we provide contact we're, we're working with the tissue level. So again, let's just do an exercise and let's do a push away. So the way that I teach a push away uh, is that we bring our arms as close to our shoulders as we can. And I want us to imagine that there is a huge boulder in front. And even, even with that, right? Like for me to have the full effect, like I even look at this boulder and I see, oh my goodness, it's huge. It's huge. And it's, thick. Like this thing is like a slab of cement. Like this is going to be really hard and very heavy to move. So I'm already noticing that like I'm getting my feet more anchored on the ground, my hips, my legs stable so that I can really push into this rock. And we're, as we start to push and go ahead and start to push. So I have my hands completely spread out and they, they feel like they're digging into this rock. Now, as we move our arms, because this rock is so heavy, we have to go very, very slow. And the slower that we go, the more of a response that our nervous system has typically. And we go until we can. If we need to speed it up because our arms are getting too weak, well, that's fine. We speed it up. But it is as slow as we are able to go. And then when we reach the end, and by the end, I mean your arms are fully extended. And I mean fully extended. You can't cut this short and expect to work with the nervous system. The nervous system needs to complete responses. That's one of the reasons why trauma gets stored in our body is we never completed a trauma response. So when we get to the end, my arms are now fully extended. And then I just pause. I get my deep, spontaneous breath. So I know that that's my sign that my body is done. And then I drop my arms and then I just rest them. And then I just notice. Hmm. If I don't pause to notice, I run right past all of these things that are changing in my body that are a sign that my nervous system has shifted. And so as I notice here, I am noticing, I'm noticing that my shoulders feel like they've come down, that I feel like my shoulders have relaxed. I notice also that my stomach feels like it is just, uh, softened is a word that I, that I'm going to use to describe this sensation in my stomach. I don't know what other words to use and I'm not going to get hung up with words. That's not the point here. The point is just to notice how my body, other areas in my body are even responding, which is a sign that something shifted in the nervous system. If I'm getting body responses in other areas of my body. So what are you noticing? Um, no, I was noticing, yeah, the softness in my belly and actually heard my belly start to go. Rah, 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 yes, the stomach like, gurgles. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And, and we didn't need a supplement for that, right? Like, <laughs> so 
actually for people who have digestive issues, any, any kind of digestive issues, doing a short somatic exercise before they eat is one of the best things that they can do because they're literally shifting their nervous system to be receptive to, oh, we're safe enough now that we can eat. That tiger is not chasing us right now. And so even with that gurgling, that's a sign that, ah, oh, like my digestive system has shifted as a result of my nervous system having shifted. People will often express that they feel this expansion in their chest. And it's almost like they feel that they have space to breathe after pushing this rock away. And what a lovely sensation, right? In our busy world to actually feel like I have space. I have space to think. I have space to breathe. There's enough time. I have enough time. And I am enough. <laughs> what I explain to people too is because a lot of us that have got this trauma, we're also higher, have a tendency to be empaths. So they kind of come hand in hand. And so we're always feeling other people's energy and everything else going on. And sometimes I feel like my energetic bubble is just right here. And so you just barely touch it and it's like, ow, you know, to where if you can push that space out, I mean, just again, how beautiful is that to be able to breathe and to fill your ownness in your space instead of every, you know, my kids and the dog and my boss and my husband and blah, 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 blah. well, and if you really want to do boundary work, like you need to do the physicality of the boundary work. You can't just do the emotional work or the psychological work and commit to certain boundaries. Like you need to actually bring in the physicality of something if you really want to engage your nervous system and have it imprinted as a, an approach that we do just as, as our survival mechanism, as, as what we do to, to live and move through life. If we don't bring in the physicality of something, then it stays on a logical cognitive level, but it never drops below that into this is my default. And this is what's now wired into my body to naturally having and maintain that space around me so that I'm not constantly bombarded by other people's energy, for example. Absolutely. So that would Man. be the very important element of, of somatic work, right? It's like, we're bringing in the physicality of something. We're not just sitting there talking about something. We're bringing in the physical movements. And that is what has the most power on our nervous system. Absolutely. We, I know you've got another summit coming up. So tell us a little bit about that and, and you know, why and what are we going to learn and what should we expect? I love to do these um, online biology of trauma summits. This is my fourth biology of trauma summit. And this summit is specifically focused on understanding the connection between attachment, mm. adverse childhood experiences and chronic illness. And so with that, we're going to be uh, bringing in some experts, but this is going to be a very different summit because I'm much more focused on, again, making it practical for people. So I have included workshops. I have guided exercises throughout the summit. Every day is going to have a worksheet and a handout. So it's, it's, yes, it's both a schooling, but it's also, let me teach you some of the practical exercises to have people feel empowered already just at the end of the, of the summit. So this summit is airing May 16 and it's all focused on attachment and how does attachment and something that happened in our early life become our health as an adult and what to do about it. Absolutely. Yeah. We don't have to stay victims. We don't have to stay stuck. And that's the beautiful part about this stuff. You know, it's funny. I quit drinking not too long ago. And before I did though, I'd be like, People were like, why aren't you drinking? And from Dr. Amy, I learned, you know, about priming events and, you know, the inflammation that causes in the brain and all the things. And people look at me like I'm nuts, but I'm like, no, seriously, the struggle is real. All right. And I work so hard to keep my nervous system nice and healthy and balanced that I, I just, I just don't, I don't want to partake anymore in that type of stuff because of what it does to the body and how long it takes me to overcome, you know, damage control. No, thank you. Right. It really is damage control for me. Like that is my definition of self-care. It's not, it's not a spa day. It's not, you know, binging on a movie and calling that self-care self-care is knowing how to support my body to be its best. Uh, mic drop. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. So where can people find you and where can people, obviously they'll, we'll have this in the show notes, but where can people find you and where can we uh, sign up for the biology of summit for? 
Yeah. So I have a biology of trauma podcast. I have a YouTube channel. They can find me there, learn more information there, and they can find me at the biology of trauma.com website. And that will also have more information and, and guides for them on what is this thing called biology of trauma and what to do about it. And I'm, I will be happy to share with you the links for people to sign up for the free summit. Absolutely. Love it. Thank you again so much for your time. I know how crazy, crazy busy you are and just doing amazing things in this world. And like I said, you have completely changed my life and through you, I'm changing other people's lives and want to continue to spread this uh, awareness out into the world that we don't have to stay victims and stuck you know, to our crappy early childhood or, or, or whatever the trauma might be, right. Whether it's from viruses and bacteria, or early childhood trauma, like there's so many different ways we get trauma stuck in the nervous system, but you address them all. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you Everybody so else. Like I was saying, make sure you also go to, we are Nikki.com forward slash podcast, enter in bio beats for 10% off. And because we love our customers so much, we offer and show our appreciation. We give away a free Nikki uh, with every episode. So you'll want to go check out the show notes to find out how you can enter to, to win that. And also make sure to get all the links so that you can sign up and do not miss out. I'm telling you, get your, get your spot for the biology at trauma summit. You are not going to regret it. Thank you again, Dr. Amy. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Stay tuned. Hey there. My name is Jer. I'm an art director and a graphic designer. My wife and I have two grown sons. Both are starting their young careers, apprenticing in their fields of passion. And then there's our favorite son, our seven-year-old puppy, Andre. Andre has been the best addition to our family in the last decade. When the pandemic hit three years ago, my career was turned upside down. I started working as a contractor for a few clients and working from home. I haven't looked back since. My schedule with work is hectic and often stressful. I have two ways of dealing with my stress and anxiety. Number one is my dog, Andre. And number two is my bioenergetic wearable, Nikki. When I need help with my work-life balance, I use my Nikki in stress and anxiety mode. And I have a puppy break. My Nikki touchscreen watch is pretty easy to use. It's cool that I can dial up individual frequency sets. When Andre is ready to go, I tap energy. I've been a longtime hockey coach and play in goal twice a week myself. I find the pain mode has reduced the inflammation in my legs in particular. The nighttime mode has been great, and when I wake up in the middle of the night with too much on my mind, I tap insomnia. I charge my Nikki every other day at my desk. I've been wearing this cool tech for almost a year. On the latest update, I see there are some new frequency bundles. There's morning, afternoon, evening, on top of nighttime, and now nighttime light. The views, information, and opinions expressed in this content are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of Freemedica. Freemedica Technologies, Inc. and its employees are not responsible, nor verifies accuracy any of the information contained in the following content. The primary purpose of this content is to educate and inform. This content does not constitute medical or other professional advice or services.